Here, we will cover the different features of the user interface in the basic trend plot. Let's open up a basic trend plot to see the different options that are available to us. In the top left corner of the plot area, you will notice the search bar to add tags to the plot. I will add a few tags here so that we have some information to visualize. We'll start with the timeline. You can see here that the time range is indicated by timestamps written on the left and right sides of the bottom of the plot. Below these timestamps, there is a visual timeline with a sliding window that allows you to drag and drop the window as needed to adjust the timeline showing the trend plot. This clock icon to the right of the timeline toggles whether the plot is updating in real time or remaining in a static position. Below the timeline, we have the tag legend. Here, any tags that you have entered will show up in a tabular form, with columns that can be customized by clicking the Add Remove Columns icon. Checking the checkbox next to these tags will allow you to edit the tag's properties through this collapsible menu. while clicking the box with the colored line, will toggle the tag's visibility in the trend above. Moving up to the top of the trend area in the top left corner, you will see this icon to expand the zoom control. When we click this, we have four options, similar to previous versions of Aspen One Process Explorer. Let's click the first icon, the draw rectangle icon, and now we can select a range in our plot by clicking and dragging. Once you select a rectangle, you'll have three options. You can zoom in by clicking the icon on the left, create an annotation by clicking the icon in the middle, or create a comment by clicking the icon on the right. First, I will create an annotation. I click this flag icon in the middle, and two boundaries, A and A prime, are created, as you can see here. By expanding the annotation pane in the top right corner, I can see all annotations that I have created. Now let's select another portion of the trend and we will create a comment. You'll notice that this brings up a new dialog where I can choose to save this comment locally as a file or to the IP21 database for all users to access. Once I submit the comment, the boundaries are marked just like they are for annotations, except they are black and more triangular as you can see here. In the annotation pane, the details of the comment are collapsible. Comments will be reviewed in more detail in a separate video as well. Finally, if I select a third segment of the trend, I can choose the option to zoom in. This will resize the timeline window to fit the section that you have selected. Another change since previous versions is that the replay icon, formerly located in the top right of the interface, is now an expandable replay tool from the bottom left edge of the screen.